Okay, recording is on. Class is now officially in session. Um, <laughs> yeah, murder hornets. Yes. Uh, well, there's just no end of things to worry about, is there? Skylar says he can't hear. Uh, or I'm Sky, I mean. Sky says he can't hear. The rest of you guys can hear me okay? I mean, yeah. Okay, Sky, I don't know what to tell you. Everybody else is hearing fine. Uh, okay, so let's get on with the class here. Okay, so first off, everybody needs to know that there will not be any class on Friday. Um, so yay. We're, we're pretty much winding down now. I, I, we've covered all of the new material that uh, uh, that I plan to teach. I mean, had we been at school, oh, there is so much we would have done differently, guys. I mean, this class is intended to be a hands-on class. And so uh, there was so much stuff I wanted you to do with, with electronics where you actually get out voltmeters and, and measure things and, and build actual burglar devices um, and just, and, and with machines there were, th there, I've got lots of cool stuff in my lab where we could have made really interesting machines, but what you gonna do? coronavirus and and now the murder hornets what can you do okay so uh, so no class on Friday and then uh, there will be a homework assignment that will do on, be due on Monday we've already talked pretty much about what it is but I'm gonna fill in a couple of the details that we didn't talk about last time but before we do that let's talk about last night's quiz or last time's quiz all right, so this was just uh, uh, to make sure that you guys are good with calculating IMAs. All right, so for the ramp here, I pretty obviously, okay, the, the distance your hand moves divi divided by the distance that your hand would have moved had you uh, not used the machine. So five divided by two is 2.5, okay. Um, now this one here is a wheel and axle. It's kind of hard to tell from the picture that that's what it is. But that, that center brown one, that's the axle. And then the, uh, the bigger one is the wheel, okay? All right, so take the ratio of the two. Now, now some of you may be wondering, why did I tell you what the effort force was? Why did I tell you that the effort force was 32 pounds? And why does it say minus? I never noticed that before, huh? Okay, that, that minus sign was intended to be an, an equals. Okay, uh, so why would I do that? Well, to purposely throw you off. I know from experience in the past that a lot of students, they think that, well, if the teacher gave us the number as part of the problem, then he must expect us to use the number somewhere. And uh, I mean, I see that all the time. Get used to it. No, I mean, I, I will purposely throw in numbers that are just what we call red herrings. Have you heard that term? Okay, it's there just to throw you off. It, it's there just so, so that I can ensure that you can look at a, a flood of information, some of which is useful, some of which is not, and figure out what is the useful stuff and then ignore all the stuff that's not useful. You're gonna see that's gonna happen a lot to you, especially when you take the, uh, the ACT exam you guys are just ninth graders, so you've got a little while yet before you have to take that one. But that's one thing they love to do in the ACT exam is they give you this big paragraph containing a whole lot of information, some of which, well, some of which is essential to answer the problem, but a lot of it has nothing to do with the problem. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so we got a pulley system here. I wanna know what the IMA is. All right, so what you do is you, you either draw the line or or the box, you know, whichever way. Um, count the ropes. And so the IMA there works out to be four. Now, some of you hopefully recognize that it would be more correct to say that the IMA is a negative four. But you're gonna see that people ignore that all the time because a lot, a lot of times, maybe even most of the times, the direction of the force is not really important. Uh, the only thing that's important is the absolute value of the IMA. So quite often people will just go with the absolute value. But there are occasions where it is important to put in the minus sign and so in that case we'll put it in, but don't be surprised if we don't always. Okay, so uh, 
the four, question number four was just to make sure that you guys understood what was due today. And apparently some of you did not get the message. Okay, so let's talk about this one. So what was due today was drawings of three simple machines that you could put in your uh, Rube Goldberg uh, machine together with the IMAs that you calculated. Notice that last part, together with the IMAs that you calculated. A few of you, when I looked at the homework that you submitted, um, you had drawings of the machines, but you had not calculated the IMAs. That was an important part of it, calculating the IMAs. Now, one of you did not include drawings. One of you included photographs, um, which, you know, wasn't really what I asked for. I mean, I, 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 gave, I gave you credit, um, but I really intended for for drawings for a couple of reasons one is i want you guys to get experience at engineering drawing you know uh, that we spent a lot of time in this class talking about how to do engineering for drawings properly or at least sketches um, and a photograph uh, some people say well a photograph is better than the drawing isn't it and to which i say sometimes it's not in fact quite often Quite often, a drawing is actually better than a photograph because the photograph includes everything that, you know, that's sitting on the table. Um, you know, say, say you've got one thing on the table you want to take a picture of, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff around it. And so when I look at the drawing, it's sometimes hard to tell what's the important part and what's not. So with a drawing, what you can do is you can include only the stuff that's important and you leave out all that background stuff that, that's irrelevant. So there are a lot of times when drawings are actually better than photographs. Okay. Um, and, oh, and also uh, I, I didn't ask you to give me the entire Rube Goldberg machine. I only wanted the three elements. One of you gave me a drawing of the entire Rube Goldberg machine, which was okay, but uh, I, I really only wanted the three that you could calculate the IMAs for. Okay, so I don't know, nobody mentioned anything about the secret word being wrong, okay? The secret word was actually GURB with a B, not GURP with a P. Um, so that was a mistake on my part. Now I'm not gonna wear the wig because of it, uh, yes, it was it was GURB, right. Um, so I'm not going to wear the wig because of this mistake, because you know, the wig is only for math and physics errors, okay? But, you know, this is a good learning opportunity. I mean, everything's a learning opportunity, right? So let's suppose that you're taking some standardized test, and you work out what you think the answer is, and you look at the choice of answers that you have to pick from, and none of them is exactly right. What do you do? I mean, this happens, this happens a lot. Um, what do you do? Okay, well, go with the answer that's the least wrong, okay? Um, okay, so Danny, you say the, the most accurate, yeah, or in this case, the least wrong. Okay, so GURP with a P, uh, you know, that's, that's the closest to being the right one, so go with it. Now, on the ACT exam and other really big, important exams like that, it's, it's pretty, much unheard of that they make mistakes where, where one of the answers isn't the right answer. I mean, that I've never heard that happen in the ACT. But uh, the state of Utah makes standardized tests. Uh, in fact, one of them is a test that you guys would have taken. If, if it weren't for the coronavirus shutdown, the, the state of Utah has a multiple choice test that you would have had to take and it's a test that somebody in the state office of education made up and there are mistakes in that test. There are questions on that test where I look at that question and I think to myself, well, what was this guy smoking when he made up the test? Because none of the answers are really right. But one of them is, is the least wrong. Okay, so that's clearly the one that they want you to go with. But, but technically, there, there are a couple of questions on that test when I looked at it last year and I said, none of them is right. I can see that this is the one that he wants, but even that one has a mistake. That one's not completely right. So get used to it. There's a, there's a skill to taking multiple choice tests and, and you guys, uh, you need to know it. Okay, oh, let's see, I guess that was it, right? Okay, so now, Let's talk about the homework that you guys submitted. So first thing 
is as of about one hour ago when I checked most recently, I found that at least half of you had not yet submitted the homework. Now, maybe in the last hour you guys quickly submitted them. I hope that's the case. But uh, it's not a good idea to leave things for the last minute like that. I was, uh, I was definitely concerned with you know one hour before the deadline and, and only about half of you had submitted it. Got me worried, so finger wag, okay? But as long as you got it in before the deadline, okay, I'll, I can't argue with that. Okay, so let's look at a couple of them here. I hope you guys don't mind if, uh, if I put up some of your work. Okay, so here is one, um, and Luke, I'm gonna go ahead and name you here. Um, uh, I, yeah, I, there's no, I don't th see anything embarrassing about what you did here. Uh, okay, so what we've got is he's got three machines here. So um, let's, let's go with number three first. Okay. All right, so, and then there's a reason why I'm going in this order. Okay, so his third machine here was a, what, a first class lever. So he's got the string there and then the string uh, gets pulled out causing the lever to tilt up and then the, the ball rolls down. Um, and so he's calculated that the IMA here is three. Okay. All right, so then, so we've got, now he doesn't say what it is that's gonna be pushing down on here. Um, and okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But in the homework that you're gonna do for tonight, which will be due next Monday, I do need to see the entire sequence. I, I do need to know what it is that's gonna be pushing down on here. But for tonight, that's fine. Okay, so some mystery thing is gonna be pushing down on this, but it's not gonna be able to push down because there's a string here that's holding something which he didn't describe in detail, a pin or something, I don't know. Something is preventing the lever from flipping up. And so then something is gonna happen in his Rube Goldberg machine that's gonna cause the string to get pulled out, which will then allow this effort force to do its job. Uh, it was a counterweight, okay, the pushing force of gravity. Okay, good. All right, and, and so then once this thing lifts up, then the ball is gonna roll down and, and activate something else. Okay, so this is exactly the, the kind of thing that I was hoping for for today. But for Monday, I do need to know how this piece fits together with the other piece. So for day, today, it's fine. But for Monday, I'm going to need to have more detail. Okay, for number two here, he's got some pulley that's going to redirect the string. Now, people who don't understand engineering might look at this and say, well, that's not really a machine, to which I would say, yes, it is. Okay, and we talked about this before, but it's worth emphasizing again. Even though the machine may not increase the amount of force, if it changes the direction of the force, that is a useful machine. Okay, so number two here, definitely an acceptable one. Okay, now number one here, I had some questions for you here, Luke. So you say that this is a second class lever and you say that the distance to where the effort force gets applied is three inches, and the distance to where the resistance force gets applied is only one half of an inch, um, and it's gonna be used to turn on a sink. So I don't understand the resistance force here, because um, if, if this is just a sink handle, then there isn't really a resistance force. It, it's really just a, a lever turning uh, the, the shaft here. So Luke, uh, could you maybe turn on your microphone? And I mean, you could type it if you want, but, but if you just hold down the space bar, that'll turn on your microphone. Can you describe a little bit more detail about what is this resistance force that's a half an inch from the pivot point? Um, no, David, I disagree. I don't think he actually typed it. It's more than just the handle, yeah, but what, what is it? What is the other thing? Um, you don't have a microphone? You can, that'd be the easiest thing, just turn on your microphone. So what is the resistance force here? I'm guessing you don't, so, so Luke, give me a yes or no. Do you have a microphone that you can turn on? The resistance is the handle. Yeah, but what is it? 
Oh, you have no microphone. Okay. All right. So, all right, Luke, I won't press this too much, but I don't understand the, the way you've got it drawn here. You, you, sh you make it look as if there is something that is one half of an inch away from the pivot point. Um, and I don't understand what that thing is, but tell you what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sweat it too much. Okay. So here's Luke's, uh, or that was Luke's. Okay. So this next one here is Eve's. Um, so Eve has given us three different machines that she's going to use. Uh, one of them, it looks like, is a book. Um, and in fact, she even told us what the title of the book is, I guess. Okay, so now I don't understand how the book is going to fit with the rest of the, uh, the uh, Rube Goldberg machine. But I didn't ask for that. So, uh, so no problem. Uh, but for Monday's homework, I do need to know that. Okay, I do need to know what it is that's going to hit the book and, and where is it going to hit. And when the book tilts, I need to know how that fits. So this is very important. I need uh, for Monday's homework, not only do I need each of the individual pieces, but I need to know how the pieces are going to fit together. Okay, so like I said before, for tonight's homework, what you've got here is perfectly fine. But for Monday's homework, I need to see how the pieces fit with everything else. Okay, uh, this one here, I believe this one was Kaya's. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, Kaya, but I believe this is yours. Okay, so it looks like she's got some kind of a paddle wheel, which is very similar to the example that I used. Okay, so something's going to cause the paddle wheel to spin and the paddle wheel is going to cause something else to happen. So I don't know, I don't know how they interact, but I trust that on Monday you'll tell me. Uh, and then we've got a rope here that's pulling something else. So it's kind of like the one that Luke had, where the, the machine is just redirecting the force, not, not to increasing it, which is okay. That's for a valid, uh, a valid uh, a machine. Okay, and then over here, we've got some sort of a lever. So we've got a force way out here at the end of the lever and some other thing over here at the middle of the lever. Actually, since she says that the IMA is one half, what that tells me is that the input force must be acting right here at the halfway point and the output force is acting out at the end, okay? All right, so I'll be very curious to see how, how those pieces fit with the, the rest of your Rube Goldberg machine. Okay, this one here is Mason's. And again, kind of similar type things. It looks like we've got a pulley that's just going to redirect the force. Uh, we've got a ramp here, which I don't know how the ramp is going to interact with the rest of it, but uh, I'm trusting I'll find out on Monday. Um, now this one here, Mason, let's see, is Mason online right now? Um, I'm not seeing Mason. Oh, okay. Yes, he is. Oh, there he is. Okay. All right, Mason. Um, I was curious about your third one here. This one here. I didn't quite understand what's going on here. Can do you have a mic you can turn on and explain to us what's happening with this lever here? I mean, the, it's these things here. They look like maybe they're dominoes. Uh, it, what, is that it? Were they dominoes? Oh, okay, Mason doesn't have a mic either. So my guess here is that we've got a domino that falls over that pushes the lever down, which then comes up, which causes another domino to fall over. So is my guess correct here, uh, Mason? Is that, okay, all right. Okay, that, that's what I, I guessed, but I wasn't completely sure. Okay, all right, interesting. Uh, gonna be very interested to see how that works. Okay, now Simon. Uh, you were the one that didn't submit drawings. You submitted photographs. So I, I gave you a pass here. I'll give you credit. Uh, but, I, but for Monday, please do drawings. I, I want to see that. Um, and actually, is, is, Simon, is Simon even on, online here? Not seeing. No. Okay, I don't see Simon online. Okay, so uh, let me just talk about it. And, and so Simon, I'll talk to you even though you're not online right now, because I trust you're gonna watch the recording. Okay, so I was hoping for drawings, not photographs. Um, but I am very curious to know about this squirrel here. It looks as though the squirrel has some sort of a movable tail. 
And so I don't know what it is that triggers the tail to move. Um, yeah, a nutcracker. Yeah, okay, that could be it. Um, so, so in the in the jaw here, perhaps. Okay, so I'm so I'm intrigued. Um, I I don't know how you intend to to use this in your Rube Goldberg machine, but I well, I'm trusting that you've got something good in mind. So make sure that on Monday, you know, don't just give me individual drawings or individual. Well, first off, don't give me photographs at all. I want drawings, but make sure that you show me how it all fits together. Uh, yeah, I see there is tape on the tail, but uh, but I'm not sure how it all fits together. So anyway, I mean, for tonight's homework, fine. But I, you understand for Monday's homework, I need to see how everything fits together. Okay, that's really important. Okay, so like for instance, this. This is the uh, this is the drawing that I have used as my example. And so this is what I want to see from you guys on Monday. I want to see the whole sequence. I want to know what one machine does to trigger the other. And then how does that one trigger the third one? And then how does that one trigger the fourth one? I need to see the whole sequence of how they fit together for Monday. And for the ones where you can calculate IMAs, I want you to go ahead and calculate the IMAs. And it's okay if the, uh, if the machines that you submitted as part of tonight's homework, if when you put it all together, you kind of change your mind and you say, well, yeah, I was, I was originally thinking of doing this, but now that I've spent more time on it, I've decided I'm not gonna do that one, I'm gonna do this other one instead. That's okay, that happens. Remember, as part of the engineering design process is you have a prototype. You have something in your mind that you're planning to do. But then as you get into building the prototype and testing the prototype, you realize that your initial ideas aren't going to work out quite as well as you thought. You need to modify it. That's okay. That's part of the engineering design process. So, so I have no problem if uh, things turn out to be a little bit different, but I do, I do need to know in your final project, uh, you know, when, once you've, you've worked out all the kinks and everything, I do need at least three of your elements. I need you to calculate the IMAs for those and include those. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for today. Um, so uh, let me fill in the missing details of what we did not talk about last time. Okay, so last time I told you that your Rube Goldberg machine has to have at least the three elements in it where you can calculate the IMAs. And it does need to have some additional ones as well. Um, so I didn't tell you how many. Okay, so today I'm gonna tell you that. So there need to be at least eight different elements. And when I say elements, okay, let, me, let me go back up here. Okay, so in my example here, um, each of the things that I call an element, uh, I've given, it's got a letter here. Okay, so the first element is just the alarm clock that vibrates so much that it causes the table to shake. That is an element. Okay, and then the next element is you've got a ball or something sitting on the edge of the table. So when the table shakes, it causes the ball to fall off the table. That is a separate element. So there's two elements. Okay, the ball falls onto the wheel, causing the wheel to turn. That is a third element. And then so forth and so on. So, so you, you see there, each one of those is an element. So in your Rube Goldberg machine, you need to have at least eight elements. You can have more if you want. And I will give extra credit if you do uh, have more, or if the eight elements that you use are really complicated. Basically, my, my criteria is if you make me say, wow. Okay, so there's a couple ways you could say, wow. One is by having more than eight elements, and the other one is by having eight really cool elements. Either way would be acceptable. If you can make me say, wow, I'll give extra credit, and we'll talk more about the extra credit, but okay. So, so at least eight elements, Three of the elements need to be ones for which you can calculate IMAs. The other ones, it's okay if you don't calculate an IMA. In fact, let's go back up here to my example again. The alarm clock shaking the table. How are you gonna calculate an IMA for that? I mean, you really can't. 
Okay. All right. So it's acceptable to include, even though you can't really calculate the IMA. Okay. Same thing with the cup falling over. Okay. The cup falls over and the little ball rolls out. How do you calculate an IMA for that? You know? All right. So it's acceptable to use. Okay. Even though you can't you calculate an IMA for it, but three of the ones need to be ones you can calculate an IMA. Okay, so what I need to see for Monday is drawings. And Simon, I do want drawings, not photographs. Okay, uh, and so you, I want you to upload that to Canvas uh, by Monday. All right. Now, you do not need to have your Rube Goldberg machine built by Monday. I mean, the sooner you start on it, the better. Um, if you have it done by Monday, fine. Then that means that uh, you can relax uh, next week. Okay, but it's not required to have it built by Monday. All I want by Monday is the is the drawings. And now the the deadline for having it built is the Monday after next, so May 18th. That's when I need to see have the thing built, and uh, I need a video of it working. But that's not until May 18th. Okay. All right. Now extra credit. Okay. So like I said before, I will give extra credit if you can make me say wow. Um, but I am putting an upper limit on it because I don't want you putting in hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. It's, it's not worth it. So the, I'm only going to give you 10% as the upper limit of extra credit. So the, so the, the whole thing is going to be worth 100 points. So that means that if you do a really good job and if I say, wow, then I'm, I could give you 110 points out of a possible 100 and out of a possible 100 okay but i'm not going to give you more than that so don't go spending hundreds and hundreds of hours designing something thinking that i'll give you 200 points out of possible 100 because it ain't going to happen okay well that's pretty much it for today uh don't forget to take the daily quiz which will be posted later this afternoon takes me a little while to process the video um, so are there any questions? Do you understand what tonight's homework is? And do you understand what the ultimate goal is? Okay, so I'm saying, I'm seeing no, and I'm presuming that no refers to the, uh, the, you know, whether you have any questions. So Van is reminding us we haven't done the secret word. So Van, would you like to be the one that picks the secret word for today? Okay, noise. Okay, Van wants to go with weird. Okay, all right. So weird will be the secret word for today. Okay, all right. And so uh, Don's is asking, is the paddle wheel a lever or a wheel and axle or both? And the answer to that one is it's more of a lever. Um, the, the wheel and axle would be if the paddle wheel had a little knob or nub or whatever you want to call it at the at the center of the wheel and you had something attached to that nub then it would be a wheel and axle but in my example the paddle in fact let's go let's go up here okay so in my example right here the input force is acting out here at the very edge of the wheel and then the output force is when something at the edge of the wheel knocks over the cup so so it is definitely not let me go back it is definitely not acting as a wheel and axle there it's acting just as a lever now if you wanted to take something let's say that you had a piece of string and you tied the piece of string to the spoke here so that the output force is acting at a different distance from the pivot point than the input was, then you could make a case that it's kind of sort of a wheel and axle at that point. But in, the way it's done right here, I would I would say the answer to your question, Don, is no. That, that would not be a wheel and axle. Um, okay, I think that we have covered everything we need to cover. So let me do the countdown here. Any questions? Going once. Going twice, sold. <laughs>